Okay, so today we will discuss on orthopedic oncology. This uh, presentation is only for bone tumor section, not soft tissue section. Okay, uh, I have missed something, some stuff, but this is the only thing which will come in exam. This is the maximum thing which can come in exam. And here goes the screen. Okay, this talk, talk is only for exam purposes and it's all not for guidance or management. Okay, we'll talk about the things which is are asked in exam. And before we talk, I expect you that you have some basic knowledge. If not, you can study it and you can reapply this and you will learn a lot. Okay? So we start with general information. Then we go to diagnostics, workup in general, then biopsy principle, then classification, then metastatic bone lesions, and then benign lesions. Okay? So how you diagnose a lesion? So for any lesion, first of all, bony bone tumors, you have to take a history, physical examination, radiology, biopsy. Uh, in our book, there is a diagnostic triangle. A diagnostic triangle is basically history, physical examination, radiology, and pathology, which consists of macro, micro, and molecular assessment. In history of bone tumors, the first important aspect is pain. The patient will come up with pain. Uh, in soft tissue tumors, the, the problem is with the mass. The patient normally come with a mass, not bone, to, uh, not pain. Pain is only in the neuromuscular sheath tumors. Okay. So, pain generally it should have a long duration on of onset, nocturnal pain, associated malaise, weight loss. These symptoms should be there. In history, we can also ask for familiar predisposition. For example, Ewing sarcoma is by, e, by a chromosomal change, e, EXP11-12. So if there is any uh, chromosomal uh, genetic uh, translocation, then it will, be, it will have a positive history, positive history in the family. Uh, then other uh, uh, factors which is uh, important is radiology. In radiology, we can do CT scan, bone scan, skeletal workup and MRI. So basically for any bony lesion, we first of all do CT scan. But MRI is done at the end of the day for neurovascular assessment and the extent of the lesion, underlying soft tissue component and skip lesions. Okay? So, there is an age three direction for everything. Bone tumors basically can tell you what it is just by knowing in the patient's age. I will give you one example. Uh, osteosarcoma is a bimodal distribution, second decade and sixth decade. Ewing sarcoma is in juvenile, second decade. Paget is middle age person disease. Myeloma is for old age. Giant cell tumor is a middle age disease when the physis are closed. Chondroblastoma is, is a is, a, is, is in patients which have open physis. Neuroblastoma is for the infants. And infection is for all ages. And eosinophilic granuloma is for adolescents. Thank you. I have a question. So, radiology. Do you know what is OMJ due? Anyone? You can no, hear me? No, no sir. You know? no, we don't okay. know. Okay, so Zahid, keep talking with me because I will ask you. You can tell me no answer. OMJDU is a simple acronym which I learned when I came to orthopedic surgery. This means osteosarcoma in metaphysis, giant cell tumor in epiphysis, and, and diaphysis for evics. Okay? Okay. Okay, so, so location is, is important. Okay, so any epiphyseal lesion can be chondroblastoma, giant cell tumor, or chondrosarcoma, clear cell type. Okay, 
uh, diffusal lesion can be Ewing lymphoma or adamantinoma or fibrous dysplasia. Uh, metaphysal can be inchondroma, fibrous dysplasia, METS, hemangioma, multiple myeloma, and brown tumors. And spine, in vertebral body, we have hemangioma, histocytosis, and posterior element, we have osteoblastoma and osteoidostoma. There is an original post cyst also, but remember these two. So this picture shows the location. Like you can see that even in the diaphysis, the non specifying for uh, fibroma is concentric, centrally located. Then if you see chondroblastoma in epiphyseal zone, osteomyelitis in the metaphyseal zone, chondromexite from fibroma is eccentrically located. And the resonal bone cyst is centrally expensile. Osteoid osteoma has a nidus, and osteochondroma has either uh, uh, a sessile or pedunculated lesion. So when we see an x ray in exam, you have to describe the x ray with respect to whether it is benign or malignant. Okay? Uh, benign lesions are well defined, sclerotic borders, they lack soft tissue mass. There is a solid periosteal reaction and there is a geographic bone destruction. Okay. So any lesion which has is well defined, has a very well known zone of transition. Uh, Excuse uh, me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you please do the slideshow so that the screen will be bigger? It will be better it because the whole computer is hanged. It will get hanged. That's the problem. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So benign lesions are basically well defined, sclerotic. They lack soft tissue mass, solid periosteal reaction, geographical bone destruction. Solid means it is it is exactly at one location. It is not like all, all around, like sun ray appearance, spicules, or hair on end appearance. These are all malignancies. Malignant tumor have interrupted periosteal reaction. Okay, you see the hairs on this picture also. They are moth-eaten, permeative, as if it's not visible complete. It's hidden. They have soft tissue mass and a wide zone of transition. Okay, sir. So. This is a good hang, that's the problem. So, man can describe biopsy pearls. I will, I will describe the, the law of biopsy, how you do biopsy. And this will be asked in exam. So, biopsy is always done by after all the clinical, radiological, and lab investigations. Okay? Primary surgeon who would operate should do resect, or, or operate for resection should do the biopsy. Incision site should be carefully planned. No transverse incision except scapular region. Don't violate compartments. For example, proximal humerus lesion, I will do deltoid splitting approach, not deltopectoral approach. If there is a tumor in the femur, I will go anterior instead of going lateral approach. If I go into the knee, I will be careful to not to violate, to violate any compartments. Ishmat is not to be done. You should avoid hematoma. Deflate tourniquet before closing, closer, closure, and drain always through the wound. The bone hole should be oval or round and fill with PMMA. Biopsy should be periphery with viable tissue and not the necrotic central tissue. Frozen sections should be always available. And remember this law, all biopsies for the culture and all culture for biopsy. So anything which is infection should go for histopathology and anything which is going for histopathology should go for culture sensitivity also. So regarding treatment of musculoskeletal tumors, uh, for us as a surgeons, we do resection. There are four types of resections in our book. I'm, I, I have taken this all from Campbell, don't worry. So the first type of resection is interlesional. This is dissection within the tumor. Then there is a marginal resection through the pseudo capsule. This is actually the reactive tissue. And in malignant tumors, there is pseudo villi into it. There is a micromats into it, pseudo capsule. 
Then there is a wide zone. This is dissected to the normal bone. Normally, we should take two to three centimeters of normal tissue when you are dis dissecting the malignant tissue. And radical is all compartment containing the tumor is resected. For example, liposarcoma, interior compartment, you resect all the interior compartment with the was tie and the quads, all compartment. This used to be done previously before chemotherapy had been. So this is the, uh, a yellow line is telling you an intralesional resection. Then the the, the 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 blue line is going through the pseudo capsule, and the red line is wide resection. So, regarding incidence classification exam, remember the incidence that the most common tumor in orthopedic is metastasis from others, and the commonest primary is multiple myeloma, and then is osteosarcoma. So, anything classified benign tumors into latent, active, aggressive. Latent is a well-defined lesion. Active is a progressive growth lesion like ABC. And aggressive is the one which is, which is not limited to the barrier. For example, GCD can be having soft tissue component and can have loss of cort cortical integrity. This is Anakin's classification of malignant bone tumors. So it has classified to cl one, which is low grade, two, which is high grade, and three, which is metastasis. And again, 1A, 1B, intracompartmental or extra compartment. This is EGCC system bone tumors. It's very easy. One is low, two is high grade, three is any, and four is also any. The size is... Uh, one minute, dear. Just be silent. Okay. Okay, so one is low, two is high, and three is any. And then A and B, less than eight centimeter and more than eight centimeter. Type three is having skip lesions into the bone. And four A is pulmonary, and four B is non-pulmonary. Okay, sir. Oh, this is hanging there. Okay. So, so determining the prognosis, the first more prognostic factor is stage of the lesion. At what stage the tumor is. The second most important factor is presence of metastasis. Third prognostic is skip metastasis. Fourth is histological grade, and five is the size of tumor. In general, the higher the grade of the lesion, the worse the prognosis. And this grade is by histology, by the way, I'm telling you, or the more aggressive the lesion will behave. The higher the histological grade, they behave similarly. Like for example, bone fat or nerve, higher grade liposarcoma will be similar like, like spindle cell carcinoma instead of low grade liposarcoma. Osteosarcoma when it becomes high grade or D different, uh, high grade like uh, the, 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 the small cell osteosarcoma will act like de-differentiated chondrosarcoma. They will become similar. They will be not following the same pathway, same lineage of cells. So remember these things, osteosarcoma generally present as stage 2B, means high grade or extra compartmental. And chondrosarcoma generally present as stage 1A, means intracompartmental and low grade. So we will start first with metastatic carcinoma. Very interestingly, I push it. I put it like this because uh, normally we we study benign lesions and we don't study the malignant tumors in a in a correct way. So metastatic tumor is the most common malignant tumor of the bone. And 40 plus years patient, any patient comes with a lytic lesion, you should think of metastasis. 
and mets normally after prostate, breast, lung, kidney, and thyroid. So I will show you this X-ray. And this X-ray is 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 an X-ray AP view pelvis, and you can see sclerotic lesions all around. Uh, can you see the X-ray, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. There is no clear lytic lesion. Everything, everywhere, there is radio opaque lesions all around. Diffuse, the point. diffuse. diffuse yeah. Yes. If you see, there is there is not a single lytic lesion all around. So this is basically a prostatic carcinoma metastasis. It is plastic. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, now see this. This is, uh, if you see, as if it is punched out lesions all around the the pelvis. Yes, sir. This is a lytic lesion, and these are metastases of lung. Now this is 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 a, is, is another lytic lesion. You can see the metacarpal, the first meta, me, metacarpal of the right hand is completely destroyed. Actually, this, yes, this is metastasis of renal tumor. So the renal will always present like this or so? I will, I, will, I, will, I will tell you the old tumors now. Just give me one second. Okay. I cannot change the tumor. Okay. 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 So I will do it like this. So prostate is normally blastic. Breast is blastic. Lungs is mixed. mixed. Thyroid is lytic and renal is mostly lytic. So remember these. If, for example, you have a X ray, just keep these two X rays in your mind when you're going for exam. So in metastasis, usually the histopathology will show adenocarcinoma histology. The cells, when you take it, it will have a stroma, it will have villi and everything like, like an adenocarcinoma. And X-ray show multiple bone involvement. Uh, Mets tend to show up in the axial skeleton. Most common site is thoracic vertebra. Okay, remember that lesion which is below the knee or elbow are usually lungs or renal. That's why I show you the metacarpal in the renal. So bone is the third most common site of METS after lungs and liver. Thoracic spine remains the most common location of METS. And our treatment, our, our as an orthopedic surgeon, our, our uh, uh, job is to maintain skeletal integrity. The fixation, the fixation is basically by the Myrell's criteria. It gives us an idea. There is another criteria called Harrington criteria as well, I will tell you. What's Harrington? So newer data suggests that myelin criteria may overall overcall the need for fixation of fractures, and that the bone actually will perform better than what we have previously imagined. So normally we sometimes fix such fractures which should not have been broken even. We let it lesions, we fix them we, by thinking that if they will break up, but actually newer data suggests that bone does well. So the myelin criteria consists of four uh, indicators: site, pain, lesion, and size. And everyone is everything is scored one, two, three, and more than eight, you should do. <laughs> so Harrington criteria is this: more than fifty percent destruction of diaphyseal cortices, more than fifty to seventy-five destruction of uh, metaphyses, permeative destruction of the subtrochanteric femoral region or persistent pain following irradiation. So metastatic workup, when you have a patient which comes with a metastasis, what type of workup you do? First, you take a medical history, do physical examination, do the lab analysis, do the radiographs involving bone and the chest, whole, bony, whole body bone scan, and CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. This strategy will lead to 85% success to find out lesion. Remember, Kidney and thyroid, they are cold on bone scans. These malignant tumors, they are hot on bone scan, except kidney and thyroid. 
they will not show up. I'm talking about metastasis. Okay. Uh, metastatic lesion needs to be irradiated, following surgical stabilization. Normally, if you operate on a patient with an impending fracture, you should shift that patient for radiation oncology. So that he should be given the radiation. Starting about two to three weeks after surgery. Other treatments are to give biphosphonates. Anyone knows what is the mechanism of biphosphonates? No, sir. You should know. They inhibit the osteoclastic activity. Yes. But how it inhibits? Rank. Rank. Uh, Rank. Rankel receptor. Yeah, Rankel is, is, is No, is, one is yeah. one is the nitrogen containing and the other one is non-nitrogen containing. Yes. So the nitrogen containing inhibits it uh, by a pathway. Uh, the Myelo cholesterol pathway. Myelovol myelonate pathway. Myelonate yes. pathway. Myelonate pathway, yes. Yes. And it's how the it, it inhibits non nitrogen. The, Yes, not that's the apoptosis of the apoptosis uh, of the osteoclast. Yeah, but there mechanism be right? For GM, GMP, well, it's. Yes, we are ADP. So, the non -nitro nitrogen containing compounds are stronger. Remember these things. Right. Actually, it's basically, both of them inhibit the ruffle borders of the osteoclast. You know, ruffle borders of the osteoclast, where the acid phosphate is released. Hota hai. They inhibit that part. Right. So, the uh, regarding the prognosis, the worst prognosis of lung metastasis, they have a median survival of six months, and kidney is the next worst actor. Okay, this I missed it. If you have a renal cell carcinoma metastasis, you should embolize these lesions and operate within 24 hours. So remember this point. So all, met, all METs are radiosensitive except renal cell carcinoma. Uh, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. There is one thing which I wrote. If, uh, if an examiner asks you, patient has bone pain because of METs. What you will do? So you can tell him that if my grade is more than eight, I will do the fixation of the impending fracture. If less than eight, I will do radiotherapy. And if the patient right. re patient refuses fixation and he has a score of eight, fifteen percent chance that he will have a fracture. Right. So you have, if you have unknown primary, the most common unknown primary is kidney or and lungs. You can understand that your kidney is not. Kidney can mess, it's not very easily diagnosed. The patients have kidney tumor, or they don't know what happens. Lungs can be used, small cell carcinoma, or cell carcinoma. If below the elbow mess, it's kidney and lung. And the common metastasis are, by the way, prostate and breast. So now we will start with malignant tumors. We will discuss osteosarcoma, chondrosarcoma, even multiple myeloma, neuroblastoma, lymphoma, and chordoma. So this is the classification of osteosarcoma. Either divide primary or secondary. Primary is the one which, which occurs de novo, like a new lesion appears. And secondary, which has underlying disease like pager disease, radiation, benign pre-existing conditions. You know any benign pre-existing condition which can end up into osteosarcoma? <laughs> Pagets. 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 So there are many other lesions which can cause de novo osteosarcoma with radiation, by the way. So osteosarcoma is the most common primary bone tumor. Our classical location is metaphysial and age distribution by model. Younger population and older population. Yeah. In the younger population, it's like a primary tumor, and in the older population, it's like secondary tumor. There is a soft tissue mass with mineral density, usually blastic, but it can be lytic 
also like telegenic carcinoma or mixed lytic and blastic. Histology will say show lacy osteoid around the malignant small cells. And all osteosarcoma treatment is chemo, surgery, and chemo. New adjuvant, adjuvant chemotherapy, then surgery, and then adjuvant chemotherapy, except two low grade, well differentiated osteosarcoma or periosteosarcoma. And they have a predilection to go to lungs. So, if you have a osteosarcoma patient, so it's the treatment chemotherapy, new adjuvant chemotherapy, then surgery, and then again chemotherapy. Except these two. Okay. I, I, I told you previously, all the osteosarcoma comes, most of them come as stage 2B. High grade, extra compartmental, no mud, fats. About 20% can, can, can come up with mets as well. Uh, remember that skip lesions can occur in bone and have poor prognosis. It will be stage 3, by, by the way. Five year survival, about 7, 65 to 70%. A good chemo response, about 90% necrosis of the cell, suggests 80 to 85% survival. And lip salvage is the surgical treatment of choice. How will you work up for osteosarcoma? Hello? Uh, same, uh, going for the detailed history as well as uh, physical examination. Done. And then the, investiga uh, yeah. the hematological investigations mm -hmm. and uh, the, the imaging studies, which will include the plain radiograph uh, of the involved uh, bone good. or the joint. Mm -hmm. In both of views, as and then we'll go for uh, the CT scan for the bony extent and the MRI for uh, uh, the soft tissue involvement as well as uh, assessing the uh, vascular skip. involvement. Skip lesions also. And, and skip lesions. Same yeah. for the bone scan. We yeah. can assess for the uptake of the tracer as well as uh, for the skip lesions and you will in the bone scan. CT scan of the and then we'll go, yes, and see and test x ray. If not uh, suspicious, just as say they will go for CT scan, ultrasound abdomen for metastasis. Good, good. And uh, uh, we can go for uh, uh, the we can, to confirm our diagnosis with biopsy for histopathology and culture sensitivity. Great, very good. But these days, CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and the pelvis has become a routine, sir. Is it? Yes, okay, it is, but, but he, but Mohsen is right. Should be there. What are needed is this, these things are must needed. So there is a genetic predisposition for osteosarcoma also. There is a MYC gene and CFOS gene oncogenes expressed in osteosarcoma, also associated with retinoblastoma. And yes, RB, this RB and P53. Yeah, there is, there, uh, there is a um, uh, high level of alkaline phosphatase. What alkaline yes, phosphatase tell to us? Like what information gives to us? Destruction of the bone. Destruction of the bone. Destruction or production? Excess production. Osteoblastic Pro activity. Mm. Production. So, okay. Yeah, interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These are the questions which you miss in the exam. This happens. Yeah. So. Uh, do you know what type? Of, what 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 is the bone destruction? Yes, I just read it. You can possibly because it's just the bone production. Yeah, what you will find it. Y urine uh, pyridoline ka naam suna hai apne? Ah, ji suna hai. Pages mein usually ek raat hai. Yes, so that is for destruction. Right, right, right. Yeah, I will, I will. Put the names in. Okay. This is an x ray. Okay. If you note this x ray, this is a lobulated exophytic lesion arising from the posterior aspect of the femur and metaphysical region of the femur. If you can see the medulla, you can see through the medulla. The lesion is posteriorly placed and probably the medulla is not involved and needs another view to check. Radio dense. And minimal periosteal reaction. There is no periosteal reaction. This is periosteal osteosarcoma. Okay. 
So what is parosteal osteosarcoma? This is a classical low-grade lesion stuck on appearance to the bone, usually shown behind the knee. Actually, it's usually shown behind the knee in exams. About okay. one third of the time, it invades the medullary cavity as seen on image. Histology will show fibrous tissue, low grade osteoid. There is rarely any soft tissue mass. Sometimes it should look like cartilaginous cap, like osteochondroma. If you note it, this is like a sessile osteochondroma. You can mix it, uh, maybe it's osteochondroma. So the only problem with osteochondroma is what? Because it has a medullary cavity extending from the medullary cavity. So on the CT scan, it will be different than this. If even a lobulated, there will be no continuation of medullary cavity. Right. So there's a less than 25% chance of this tumor to metastasize. And the tumor, if, 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 if it comes back, for example, you do resection and it comes back, then you create a differentiated chondrosarcoma. And it is a very bad prognosis. So, unluckily, this is also a osteosarcoma. It is, if you note this, this is a lytic lesion. <coughs> yes, sir. And it is expensile. It is, it is involved in the, the cortices. It has, it, is, it has enlarged the lesion. It is like a, like a moth eaten. And there is no calcification around it. I'm saying why there is no calcification because cartilaginous tumor will come with calcification over here. If you have a little calcification, you can control sarcoma. Okay? But there is nothing here. And it's typical of telegetic carcer osteosarcoma. When you see an x-ray and there is no calcification, like I will use those words, stippled popcorn appearance, lesions. Stippled popcorn appearance, is for chondroid lesion, cartilaginous. Apni ye keh diya, to doctor, jo aap pa examiner hai, he will think that yes, you are talking about the cartilaginous tumor, nothing else. But here, right, right. you will use the words moth eaten. This is moth eaten, expensile, no calcification. I cannot see the zone of transition is is is, is visible, but it's not very clearly demarked. Agar aap dekho proximal distally, to it is like a picture into a picture sort of a position so this is a telegetic osteosarcoma it yes, can basically yes it can be confused blood, with what? Uh -huh. blood filled. it can yes. be filled with uh, it can be confused with uh, the abc because yes so how will you differentiate this is blood filled yeah. this is blood filled but for example you're taking a biopsy or up surgery karte hue jo na aap se blood nikal bhi gaya to histology mein kis tarah pata chalega ki yaar ye malignant the the both of the osteoids? Them, no, no, no. Both of them, ABC and telegetic, are like like blood filled cavities, baby. Basically. Yes. Okay. If you have ABC, you have to end end of the day, you will end up into a bloody like story. I don't use the, want to use that word. The issue is the issue over here is that when you go to the histologist, he will tell you that lobules are malignant in nature. So you can. Right. The problem with this lesion is there is no chondrite. Osteosarcoma is chondroid, hota hai. Ispe chondroid is very low. So is why it is a difficult diagnosis. But clinically, if you look at the aneurysmal bone cyst, they are very respectable. They, it respects the cortices. It is expensive, but it respects it. This is not respecting. You see, there are the rougher, rough borders around. So this is a telegetic carcinoma. In exam, they will not ask you to diagnose the type of carcinoma. No. Right, yes, sir. That is an important question, sir. Whether they, we have to mention that is just a osteosarcoma or we have to give the yes. name of that no 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 need to if he okay. ask you if the examiner asks you the name this means you are getting good marks very good marks okay okay sir he may ask you this is malignant or benign what do you think Concept points what points are for malignancy what points are for benign they may even ask you like this that's right okay this is another Tumor. If you see this is us, this is arising from the periosteum. It's called periosteal osteosarcoma. So if you see, it is completely in the in the transverse section. The medullary cavity is normal, okay, and it is encasing all the bone around. 
even the cortex is also visible is okay so this is called periosteolosis sarcoma and this is also one type of osteosarcoma so there are many uncles brothers and sisters of osteosarcoma so there is another high grade osteosarcoma high grade sarcoma of the bone is a rare lesion commonly seen in fever and 25% comes up with pigeons in farts implant radiations treatment is same as osteosarcoma chemo surgery and chemo and survival is about 50% now if i show you some lesion see this if you note this it's a lytic lesion okay looks like lytical lytics huh? it's like un you cannot uh, uh, show you the margins or the extent of the lesion it looks like it's in distal femur it is in the diaphysal region also it is in the metaphysal region also there are like dots there are no calcification but as if there are holes around it so it is like a very narrow zone of transition also if you note it and if you note a bors echo there is a soft tissue component into it can someone say that there is soft tissue component into it yes sir yeah if you see the fever the soft tissue shadows are different you can see that there is a there is one shadow radio back shadow around the fever and then there is another normal shadow so the can you please point with your your pointer arrow if you see this what is this yes see this yes. and see this either yes, this you. is severe infection or whatever it is but it has caused something a disaster so if you see this lesion this is small cell this uh, uh, this is basically high grade osteosarcoma you cannot demarcate it and in exam they will not ask you to diagnose it really they will ask you is it malignant or benign so you will uh, you will yeah. tell him the lesion how the lesion is zone of transition kaisa hai kya aap upar aur niche uske ja sakte ho ya nahi ja sakte periosteal reaction hai ya nahi hai kuch like sir isko soft tissue tumor mein dala ja sakta hai sir ye jo area around nazar aa raha hai aap to dal bhi sakte hain lekin the, the issue is this something else this bone is the the lesion is growing so fast that it's not giving time to the periosteum to work up and give periosteal reaction okay periosteal reaction is response to the lesion over here is the opposite the 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 the, the, the lesion is so angry that is not giving time to anything to respond back right so work up osteo sarcoma needs skeletal survey mri to assess the extent of the tumor soft tissue mass skip lesions and relationship to neurovascular bundle and planning the surgical margin this margin which should be wide ct chest is needed to exclude mets and bone scan is help, helpful okay chemo sensitive effectiveness agar if you are giving patient a chemotherapy you can check recheck how what is the if the chemo sense chemo is chemo effective to him by thallium scan thallium bone scan fine so what is the treatment it's pre op chemo normally they do adromycin cis plastin a high dose methotrexate two to three cycles then they go for surgery which is limb salvage or amputation then there is a post surgical four cycles of adjuvant chemotherapy survival rate is generally 6 to 75% for low grade is 90% periosteal and well deficient corneal sarcoma does not need chemo okay if for example a patient has been treated for osteosarcoma how will you follow up that patient if you are doing very good in exam they will ask you follow up so the follow up is like this we will do ct chest and x ray of reconstructed limb and serial physical examination every 3 months for 2 years then 6 monthly for next 2 years and then annual basis and every year i will do annual bone scan for the patient it's easy sir understand yes 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 sir okay now we go for condor sarcoma it's the second most common bone sarcoma and it's a chondroid neoplasm it it is from the cartilage lineage can be primary or secondary primary de novo and pre existing chondral lesion may do you know what pre existing lesion can cause chondrosarcoma 
chondroma chondroma is multiple hereditary erythrocytosis yeah and what else good you got the point but anyone anything else so it, it has much. very common common signs as uh, sites of presentation sir usually so i am asking which 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 lesions can convert into chondrosarcoma cartilage tumor yes sir cart osteochondroma yes osteochondroma can also end up into chondrosarcoma yes sir hereditary multiple exostosis that can end up into chondrosarcoma one percent 10% chance is my pochis all yours yes this has also that is in chondroma jo aapne pehle bataya yes both okay treatment for cartilaginous tumor generally is resection there is no chemo for it and there is no radiation okay uh low grade lesion can be treated with curettage and you can use adjuvant like phenol argon beam or bone grafting but it's rarely possible so sir agar recurrence ho jaye sir resection ke baad recurrence ho jaye sir aur wo resectable area na ho to sir tab bhi chemo ya radiotherapy ka koi role nahi hoga sir there is no role debulking surgery okay. the debulking surgery acha the, the the issue is chondrosarcoma in exams chondrosarcoma comes in appendicular skeleton in the center it will never come in the limbs in exams chondrosarcoma they will give you a axial image they will tell you what is it either either ye bhi ho sakta hai ki it like in chondroma but in the femur but in the femur in chondroma is not in chondroma is actually chondrosarcoma we will talk about this later on so basically axial or or proximal appendix of the lesion have more aggressive course and prognosis is 60 to 70% for grade 2 lesion and more than 90% for grade 1 there is one tumor is written over a d differentiated chondrosarcoma this is the most lethal tumor in chondrosarcoma probably most lethal tumor in all orthopedic surgery it it can be compete with paget cell sarcoma paget sarcoma so look at this x ray it looks like a bone scan also this is x ray and a bone scan if you note if i describe this x ray i will tell that this is a punctate lesion calcified lesion stipulated calcification i can see in the in the mid shaft of the humerus plus there is a bone cortical uh, loss cortex is breached okay so if you see this x ray this is chondrosarcoma the same uh, lesion agar yahi lesion aapko finger mein mil jaye na aur usme cortex breach na ho to i will say in chondroma this even if it, uh, there is speculated appearance yeah it's a speculated in finger oh, yeah in the oh, finger, in the finger. It's, it's on chondroma in chondroma it's not chondrosarcoma agar if bone cortex is intact the same x ray of the finger if i show you and the cortex is intact but there is a right. stipulated calcification popcorn side every anything just like the chondroid lesion calcify ho gaya na bone ke andar cartilage hai cartilage calcify ho gaya theek hai right 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 agar finger mein aayega to i will say in chondroma and chondroma ha unless break hi kar gaya cortex be break kar gaya to phir bhi jo hai na main shak karunga ki yaar nahi yaar kuch aur hoga lekin in lesion appendix with a lesion axial lesion this is chondrosarcoma okay just take the x ray of the fingers and see the enchondroma in the x ray in in the in the kembel and put it in the femur you will say it's chondrosarcoma it is not enchondroma this is the only tumor in which the site changes the diagnosis for example i took a biopsy from a patient from the femur and i did not documented that this is from the femur the histopathologist will not be able to diagnose it i have to write him that this is a femur from femur the same right. amount of cells and same lineage of cells will be normal in the finger but in other places he will put in chondrosarcoma of course there are other findings jaise yahan pe if you note it there is a cortic breach this is a cortical breach and cortical breach is for malignancy so in exam they can show you this x ray with a cortical breach but they, they will never give you a difficult situation but remember this calcification 
beep, beep, medulla, and in medulla inside there is a calcification like popcorns or stipulated or comma shape. Put it as chondroid lesion. So there is one we said the differentiated lesion behaves like high grade sarcoma. And this will look histologically as high grade sarcoma and to the more classical appearance of cartilage tumor. So, de differentiated chondro sarcoma will not look like the same chondro sarcoma. As I told you before, all the tumors, when they go one step ahead, like they became highly malignant, like atypical cells are more. They become similar. For example, de differentiated chondro sarcoma will act like chondro sarcoma. Liposarcoma will become like synovial cell sarcoma. Something like this. In the same lineage, they are same. They are different. Like chondroid lesion, pata chalta hai ki chondroid hai, cartilaginous, cartilaginous hai, uh, osteoid, osteoid hai. Like once they change, one step ahead, then they are same. Ye, you can remember this that all the rich people. All the powerful aristocrats are the same. So once they become strong, they became they, they became they act like similar. So, yeah, yeah, you can remember this, yes. <laughs> so how will you differentiate an inchondroma from a malignant chondrosarcoma? One, the size is larger. Is like generally larger than eight centimeter. Then two, I'm talking about inchondroma. No, not osteochondroma. Inchondroma. So the size is large. Centrally located. Centrally means the axial skeleton. While inchondroma will be in the hand in exams. Old patient, patient comes to 78 years, 80 years of age with inchondroma. You should question it that there is something else. Then multiple lesions, for example, Mafusi syndrome, polio syndrome, they can show you these x-rays and you can say, oh, high chance of malignancy. Okay. Then there is something very interesting. You do a bone scan for an inchondroma and if the bone scan is more than the bone scan in, of anterior superior iliac spine, then it's malignant. You get me? No. Hello? Yeah, in, in, in chondroma basically are not the same hotness as chondrosarcoma. Okay? okay? So when you do a bone scan, you yeah. compare it with the anterior superior iliac spine, the activity in right. ASIS. If it is equal to it or higher than it, then this is a tumor. Yes. It's malignant. Okay. It's not okay. benign. Okay. okay. If in chondroma there is a local recurrence, recurrence, then you suspect that there is a if there is pain, because inchondroma does not have that much pain, very rare, so you should suspect that it's a chondrosarcoma. So, how benign inchondroma can transform into malignant chondrosarcoma? One is pain. Okay. Then, I think this is a mistake, cartilage cap. This is for inchondroma, uh, 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 for the osteochondroma. And growing after maturity. For example, the patient has grown up and still there is a swelling. Pain is the most important thing. I think the first two I can, uh, by myself, see that this looks like wrong. Pain in the inchondroma, there is something really wrong. Uh, here I will tell you something. This is this might be not this. This may be osteochondroma. Then it makes sense. So benign osteochondroma with the cartilage cap is more than 2.5 percent, 2.5 centimeter. It's malignant. You do a CT scan. You measure the cartilage cap. Exostosis ki baat kar raha Exostosis. You get me? Yeah. yeah. If exostosis cartilage cap is more than 2.5 centimeters, this means there is some malignant. Or it's growing after maturity, then you suspect that this is probably a malignant. 
So but do we have to do CT scan for the cartilaginous cap or MRI is better? You can check for the cap is, of the osteocarp. You can see both. There is no problem. I think if you do MRI, uh, MRI will tell you a cartilaginous cap in a more better way. By the way. But I have seen CT scan as well. It's not okay. that difficult. In both of both cases. So this is. I'm talking about some blue cell tumors. Remember these things. Blue round cell tumors are these. These clearly mixed diagnosis and can be a catastrophe. Infant Wilms tumor, kids eosinophic granuloma, juvenile Ewing's, middle age lymphoma, old mets and myeloma, and infections all the time. These are all round blue cell tumors. Okay. okay. So we'll start with the most renowned Ewing sarcoma. So it's a primary bone tu bone sarcoma in pediatric population. It's a small round cell, usually diaphyseal or metaphyseal location, with a big softish mass, and is sucked on bone appearance. It can show Cartman triangle, moth eaten, no soft tissue mineralization at histology, and there is genetic translocation 1122. When there is this translocation, there are more chances of getting Ewing sarcoma. And workup should always include bone scan, CT chest, and bone marrow, bone marrow biopsy. All these blue cell tumors sometimes of some in some way needs bone marrow biopsy. And you should check for the marrow involvement. Who can describe me this X-ray? Can someone ex describe me this X-ray? Looks like femur. Where is Salman? Uh, Jesus. What do you uh, think? It's an X-ray of the uh, showing mm. a an expansile lesion. Mm. Uh, there is no uh, defined periosteal reaction. There is periosteal reaction. This is periosteal reaction. Uh, there is a uh, soft tissue, sir. I was going to say. Periosteal reaction is what? Periosteal reaction. So, do you think you can yes, see sir. the bone and you can see something very huge? This is periosteal reaction. Expanding from the yes, sir. Yes. And <laughs> uh, should, I try? should I try? Try, yeah. Uh, plain uh, radiograph uh, of uh, skeletally mature undocumented patient uh, showing uh, 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 the sites are undocumented. No, side, uh, it's the left side written on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, showing uh, uh, the part of the femur mm -hmm. with uh, uh, the cord with osteolytic lesion. Mm, going uh, osteolytic lesion with intralesional calcification and permeative lesion with uh, the wide zone of uh, transition and uh, I cannot appreciate any cortical breach and there is a periosteal reaction most probably a cordman reaction to, and also soft tissue swelling. Yes, this is a cordman reaction. So, so, so if you see uh, uh, even sarcoma, it is renowned for its periosteal reaction. If you see there is a bone inside the bone. Like the, the periosteum has been expansile, expa expanded. Yeah. And but not typical nice onion, onion. No, no, not typical onion. Onion, sunray appearance, all of them are periosteal reaction. You can see this in even osteosarcoma. But the problem is that Ewing is known for its, its uh, uh, the periosteal reaction. Like sunray appearance and spicules and hair on end appearance and these things. And uh, onion ring is, by the way, onion peel is something renowned for it. So it is, if, if, if this time, the same that this patient comes at the age of 12. So you have two things in your mindset. Either yeah. it malignant, it looks malignant. Hai. In malignant, what it can be is, it's not an osteosarcoma. It's not possible. Because an osteosarcoma is stuck on it. It doesn't look like a stuck on appearance, like periosteal or periosteal. Or peri 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 diffuse. 
there is no zone of trans. So the most common is evings, as I told you, and just diaphysial. If you note it, ye nazdik hai diaphysial ke, then being metaphysical. So most common will be evings. Okay. So present probably osteo osteomyelitis. Yes, yes. Uh, osteomyelitis you can put in every exam. Don't even bother to not to put this in every exam. Just put osteomyelitis. Uh, infection. So this is infection. Do you know infection was everyone will say yes. So a patient, this is maybe may may come up with fever. Okay, at presentation that only resolves with chemo. And ESR WBCs are elevated, but don't confuse this with infection, which is also a round cell lesion. So remember that yeah, infection and evings are are quite nearby. So there is no problem in saying this. So the treatment of evings is chemo, surgery, and then chemo. Really, radiotherapy be cut. Yeah, radio sensitive. Do you know this? In Campbell, it's written. It's yes, yes, yes. So it's both. So it's a dilemma. Why they don't do radio is that they are afraid of like uh, secondary carcinomas. That's the issue. Okay, poor prognostic sign in Evans is patient presenting with meds. Uh, Mets have less than 20% survival at five years. Poor prognostic factors include spine, pelvic, large lesions, less than 90% with chemo necrosis with chemotherapy, elevated LDH, P53, in addition to T11 translocation. Uh, well, many favor surgery or radiation, and some data suggest better results. No randomized studies have been performed up till now. I think it's very late in Pakistan. You want to stop here? No, sir, it's okay. You have tomorrow job duty? Sir, it's okay. It's 12. Uh, it's late. This, uh, so I continue? Yes, you may, sir. Okay. okay. Now we talk about multiple myeloma. This lesion may affect multiple bones, and, and this is patho pathognomic of myeloma. Lesion basically, you have a lytic lesion. And pain is usually late finding in the tumor. Okay. So, we present with pathological fractures. Typically, a skeletal survey is appropriate since the bone scan may not show the lesion. So, this is the differentiating factor from other metastases. If you have an x ray like this and he tells you the bone scan is negative, so the only thing which is remaining is either paget or other osteosarcoma. Uh, sorry, multiple minor. And paget does not look like this. We'll go to the pages, but pages are either sclerotic or either lytic. But here you can see there are holes in the proximal femur. There is a fracture, by the way, in this patient. But if you see the left side, as if uh, termites have eaten the femur. If you see this left side, you can see apple bite. holes. Yeah, apple bite. Apple bite to colorectal <laughs> <laughs> carcinoma. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so multiple myeloma, also known as plasma, plasma uh, cell myeloma, is a cancer of plasma cells and white bone uh, blood cells, normally responsible for production of antibodies. Orthopedic plan is to stabilize. Primary treatment is chemotherapy. You refer, refer this patient to a radiologist, so on, 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 uh, oncologist. So you see, this is a this is an X-ray APV pelvis with multiple lytic lesions, small lytic lesions, and uh, different intensity outlook and needs further work up. That's enough. Then after you can decide. If we, you start doing work up and you know that bone scan is negative for multiple myeloma, and you tell him I'll do bone scan and he says negative. So either three of them, either it is renal cell carcinoma or either it is this. So easy to appreciate. Can differentiate. So lab will show hypercalcemia, elevated creatinine, serum uh, electro protein electrophoresis will show M spike, usually IgG or IgA, and is and lab of choice. So you will do protein electrophoresis. There will be high creatinine. There will be hypercalcemia. Benz Jones protein will be positive. 
and bone marrow biopsy will show plasma cells. More than 10% minor criteria and more than 30% plasma cells is major criteria. And treat with local skeletal support. Your job is to maintain the skeletal integrity. And you can use biophosphonate as well. So histology will show a lot of plasma cells with a classic eccentric nucleus and half of clear. Half a sign, half a, half a cells. This is not half a clear. Half a clear zone. Prognosis is poor overall and the patient succumbed to infections and hypercalcemia. Legend is CD38 positive or stable. So there is a rare sclerotic variant also and that looks like max. And this is also in somewhat younger population. Remember this poems. Poems consist of polyneuropathy, organomegaly, and endocrinopathy, and protein spike and skin changes. And these patients have, have, have polyneuropathy and neurological symptoms does not subside with the treatment. So, neuroblastoma. I put this because neuroblastoma is seen in infants, like four or five years old kid. And these are multiple lesions who look like round cell lesions. And look for the large adrenal mass or CT scan or the bone scan. This will never come in your exam, but I just put it because no, never miss this neuroblastoma when you're seeing any patient. This typically looks like, you know, the child will come with pain in the hip or thigh, neurological problems, and you will suspect it, which hoto sakta nahi kuch nahi hoga, there is nothing. But when you do the CT scan, you will find a huge mass, and you do the, 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 the CT of the brain, you will find lytic lesion in the brain. And then when you do the little CT of the pelvis, you will find a mass in the pelvis also. So always remember, do not miss. Do not take it granted. Because the treatment of this is chemotherapy as soon as possible. Beta cell lymphoma. These are round cell lesions typically in 30, 35 years old adults, but can be seen at any age. And normally they are washed out lesions. When I was going for exam, I was told, when you find something which you cannot put into any but thing, just put in lymphoma. And it will be lymphoma. Right. So, treatment is like multiple myeloma by chemotherapy. Okay. Now, see this. Even at this age, I cannot put it in any tumor. I can say it can be anything. It can be anything. So, if it can be anything, it is lymphoma. If you see, the proximal femur is like washed out. All the proximal femur is involved. There is no periosteal reaction and there is no visible zone of transition at all. If you see the lesser, uh, lesser trochanter is broken. This is a pathological. When you see lesser trochanter broken, this means either any malignancy and most commonly is lymphoma, which can cause this. Chordoma. Chordoma, if you want to remember chordoma, if when I remember, chordoma is shown up in pelvis and hardly visible. And normally the patient will come after rectal pain or something like this, and the patient will come up to you that G C T scan lesion is raja. And people center me lesion of the And that lesion you have will have two things in mind. Multiple myeloma hai, ya per Chordoma. And chordoma is, is mostly like the patient comes with the presenting symptoms. It's a slow growing tumor. So the presenting symptoms are something which are not very worrisome. But if you see the x ray with this, if you see the sacrum, there's an exmensile lobe, like a, a, a balloon sort of a appearance. And this will later, like a lytic lesion, if you see the sac sacrum center. So this is typical for chordoma. They are missed because of the gas shadows, mostly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This will Can also... Can you point out, sir? Huh? Can you point out, sir? This is I'm pointing out. Yeah. See this. Yes. Actually, it's very difficult to point out and uh, because of the gas shadows. As told yeah, you. it is difficult to point out. And so secondly, you... we, we need to have the history. Yeah, I am not giving you clinical examination. Yes, yes. I am telling you that up to the center, me, whatever will happen, it will be a problem. Yeah. Ah, physical examination. Yeah, it can be multiple myeloma also. 
इन सम वे बट द थिंग इज मोस्टली कॉर्डोमा अगर यही बच्चा होता छोटा तो मैं कहता यार न्यूरो ब्लास्ट होना Let's go to the benign lesions. So first of all is infections. Always remember infection in benign lesions. Okay, I just put this slide just for this. Infection is the most common epiphyseal lesion, not neoplasm. Okay. So if they tell you, show you a lytic lesion, first think it's a broody abscess. Then think about anything like clear cell chondrosarcoma. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because in exam settings, if you say this is a clear cell chondrosarcoma, you may be right, but he will ask you differential diagnosis. And the different first, the most important thing is it's a it's an infection. So remember that in the spine, infection typically involves a disc and spreads into vertebral body, whereas TB involves the body, spares the disc. Do you know anything else which spares the disc? This osteoderma? No, osteoderma is posterior element. Tumors. Uh, hemangioma. Hemangioma. Yeah, yeah. Tumors, hemangioma, histocytosis. They will be in the body. Yes, vertebral body. This will be spared, and in TB also, this will be spared. I remember this because I thought that tumor and TB are very intelligent. That's it. <laughs> yeah, they go to those places. They go to those places where there is blood. If there is no blood, why will I go there? I will die out of right. hunger. So I just remember this. So osteochondroma, it's a benign lesion arising from the cortex. You are talking about exostosis, okay? So irritation, trauma, fracture, it can cause malignant degeneration, it can infarct. In the adult, the cartilage cap less than one centimeter is likely benign, more than two centimeters is a chondrosarcoma. We discuss it all the time. Treatment is observation, can remove if necessary, get to the base and all the cartilage cap, including the pericardium, should be removed. Okay. So usually the lesion should not be growing after skeletal maturity. If it's growing after skeletal maturity, it is a chondrosarcoma. You get this? Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So hereditary multiple osteochondral exostosis, yeah, multiple exostosis, hereditary multiple exostosis, HME, is autosomal dominant, multiple lesions. And the problem in this is that there is there are deformities in the radius and bowing of the fibula, even in the knee, there is thin bowing, and these lesions are they, they are not just simple lesions because they are predilection for malignancy. So there is a 10% uh, association with these genes, XT1, XT2, XT3. This is your simple osteochondroma. How many types of osteochondroma there are? So, anyone knows? Sessile, wow. pedunculated. Very good. Yeah. There are and, two types. Uh, two basic types. third aati hai, bhi aati. Main itni knowledge nahi hai. third so in chondroma, it's a benign cartilage tumor, most common tumor in the hand, and can be seen proximal humerus and femur also. And radiography, we discussed radiography, that's stippled, popcorn, calcification, geographic calcifications. So if you see this x-ray, see this. Uh, Mohsen, we talk about this in the femur. The femur. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Over there, there was a cortical breach. But here, if you see, it looks like the same. It's like comma-shaped calcification. Intramedullary. Yeah, you think of chondrosarcoma, but in the hand, it is always benign. Uh, this looks like totally benign lesion, but if you have a break, I still question it. That can be. Right, right. Okay. Is to, what is the treatment of this? You do curatage. That's it. There is a periosteum chondroma. No grafting? Yeah, Please both grafting. Yes, both grafting or cement, whatever you like. Yes. Sorry, sorry. So periosteal chondroma almost always shown in the proximal humerus. This lesion is nestled in the cortex with some small reactive bone at the base and projecting the soft tissue. 
over here the multiplication is earlier disease has a high instances of multiple malignant transformation 10 percent and mafusi with hemangiomas and it's exceeding 50 percent in bone and right. i think uh, um, the visceral tumor is 100 percent why i say this is mafusi not earlier how you differentiate Mofusi from on, or, 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 or. Uh, but, yes. with the soft tissue hemangiomas? Yes. So is there in soft tissue hemangioma or in? How you see? In Mofuji. Yeah, but you have to look at it? No, no. Yes, the hemangioma is not looking at it? No, the hemangioma is not looking at it. has calcification. If you see soft tissue calcification, you see the soft tissue calcification over here? Right, right. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, right, yes. This is Mafusi. Okay, okay. And when you go down, this is your earlier. Aap wahan dekho to wahan bahut zyada calcification hai, jaise vessels hai. See this? Right. If you can, if you, they will not ask you this question, really. But I just wanted to be over efficient. <laughs> so, uh, the malignant transformation, regeneration, Chances, Mafusi 50 plus, only 10 to 15, multiple hereditary exostosis 10%, single enchondroma 1%, single osteochondroma less than 1%. Right. Osteoid osteoma, ye to aap sab ko aata hua. it has a nidus CT scan, it is visible on CT scan, it is, uh, it, it, the pain is relieved by NSAIDs, especially aspirin, it has abandoned osteoblasts. Blood vessels and absence of normal marrow. And the problem is that on CT scan you will find a nidus, and the treatment is to remove the nidus. So if you see this, there is an invisible nidus over here. This is, by the way, MRI. Someone has done MRI for the nidus. Sir, this metaphysis may be hot, sir. Generally, to sir, diaphysis may is cause the other. Yeah, yeah, very kiss put me x-ray. I thought many of us talk here. Yes, diaphysis will die. Okay, sir. Like in metaphysics, maybe ho sakta, sir. Can happen. That's why he did this guy did MRI. Why he did MRI? Because metaphysics for infection. So he did MRI and he found out this something else. This is in the from the book, by the way, from the textbook. So differently, he was right. So this is, in spine, it, it occurs in posterior element. Ha, in hands, if it happens, it is like an inflammatory condition. And need is best seen on CT scan, not MRI. Okay. This osteoid osteoma can also end up into scoliosis. Okay. Remember this. And uh, it, the pain increases with ethylene oxide, alcohol. To increase the pain. Treatment is either curatage, either resection of nidus. The technique is called burn down technique, and the power bar is mandatory. Or radio frequency ablation under CT control for six minutes, 90 degrees centigrade. Okay, benign neglect you can do it, but beware of NSAID associated complications. Okay, osteoblastoma it's a elder brother of uh, osteoid osteoma. If greater than two centimeters, you call it osteoblastoma. There is no nidus in it, by the way. It looks like lytic in the spine, and the bone scan is hot. And occasionally these lesions present as aggressive fashion and mistaken as malignancy. And treatment is resection. Fine. You can do radiotherapy also for it. Correct. This is JC giant cells. You have ever seen osteoblastoma, by the way? Not really, sir. Please I have never seen osteoblastoma. I have never yes, seen sir. Like, we have seen many tumors, but osteoblastoma I never seen. So giant yes, cell tumor is fairly common lithic lesion, eccentric located metaphysis. Most lesions are around the knee and can be seen in many other locations at distal tibia, radius, proximal humerus, etc. and are seen in 20 to 40 age group. This lesion may also show up in the sacrum and mimic chordoma, as can myeloma. I told, I told you, chordoma can be yeah, myeloma. If you have a fifth decade lady, which is coming from referred from general surgery unit, and she is having difficulty passing the stool or painful defecation. And you, the doctor did per rectal examination, and he found a mass and he shifted to you. And you do an x ray and you see a lesion in the center. You go for either cordoma or multiple myeloma. But over here, so, we are seeing that giant cell tumor can also come up with this. 
So Fine. remember this classification exam. I I knew this class this uh, classification in the exam day. Someone told me they aren't was Kampanaki. I don't I don't know what is Kampanaki. So <laughs> okay. yeah yeah, and I answered. You know what? I answered very confidently, and he was like very impressed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's like very funny thing. I had a short case of bone, giant cell tumor. So, one is in the bone, two expands the bone, and three extend to the soft tissue. Look at this. This is a giant cell tumor. Okay. You can, it can mimic as many other lesions, but if you see soap and bubble effects and the radius, you can think of this as more common. I have seen an article which shows that more on the ulnar side, in the radial lesion, and more on the ulnar side will be malignant, not GCD. It's malignant. Right. So remember this. This is centrally located, so it's probably GCD. Okay, if lesion reoccur, you will do. Lesion can reoccur, and recurrent lesion may require resection. Giant cell tumor can be hard to treat because periarticular location. So it can be treated with the radi radiation in pelvic and inoperable regions. Okay. Medical treatment for GCD is biphosphonate and this genosumab. So remember that this is a lesion that can mimic metastasis to lungs, usually from the distal radius lesion, as can benign chondroblastoma. There is no correlation between the apparent histology and GCT. So basically, if it's multi multifocal, you should exclude hyperparathyroidism. Brown tumor. Fine. Okay. This yes. is a bone cyst. I think this is more than me. So I will skip it because this is in the long bones in children's. It will be centrally located cystic lesion, expensile, multiloculated, can happen in metaphysis and secondary arising from chondroblastoma, osteoblastoma, or giant cell tumor. Pain and swelling are the common findings and can happen in spine posterior element. Treatment is curatage and bone grafting, and can you can do this extend uh, curatage also. Extended curator, yeah. So, can this? Don't forget to think telegenic osteosarcoma. We discussed it that this is the the, the inside the loculations are malignant. Yes. This one lesion looks like a GCD. So, yes. on, on, uh, on there is one thing I didn't mention on MRI, it will have a uh, the double density, double, yeah. Fluid double. Fluid. Yeah, yeah. Fluid levels. Yeah, fluid levels and these things. Remember these things. Chondroblastoma, the same lesion like giant cell tumor in a in a patient who is young, less than 20, or the face is still open and epiphyseal region is available, is present epiphyseal region, it is chondroblastoma. So the thing is histology will cite chondroblast with chicken wire calcification. This comes in exam, by the way. Chicken wire care and cobblestone appearance. Remember this, these words. And stain positive on S100. This also came in exam. Usually painful and can be seen 10 to 14 age group. So this is, I think, I just histology. So, treatment is with curatage and bone grafting, extending interlesion curatage. Remember, even if the physis are involved, you still you do the do the curatage. Even if there is deformity, you still do the curatage. Don't tell him that you do reconstruction surgery. Simple bone cyst, proximal humerus or physis can even cross the epiphysis. There are two types: active and latent. I don't know. I, I'm not seeing it. I think I should. Uh, yeah, I wrote it. There is a, on X-ray. There is a finding called fire fallen fragment sign. Classic appearance of piece of cortex broken into the cyst. If they are near the physis, it's, it's active. If it's, it's, it's away from the physis, it's called inactive. Often requires series of three or more synthetic bone graft substitutes or necessary may do a curatage. You can also do the aspiration, re-aspiration, steroid injection also. If presents with fracture, you will manage it conservatively and will treat it later on if needed because they say that it normally heals with the fracture. You got it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is in fact granoma both solitary, multiple and felt by a reactive and not truly a neoplastic. They, they say that it's not a neoplastic lesion. Lytic lesion 
reactive periosteal changes looks like a round cell lesion. Now, a round cell lesion on X-ray. Tumors are like blue cells. You, this is like a small blue cell tumors. It can, it can show up. The very interesting thing is, is it, it can show as vertebral plana in the spine. The, the collapse spine, vertebral plana, the treatment is orthosis. No surgery. But you can tell him that deformity will never happen, but the, 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 the vertebra will never gain the same height. Impossible. This is unicameral bone cyst. I think I put it in the wrong place. This is also unicameral bone cyst. I put it in the wrong place. So it can be solitary or multiple. Known to be reactive, not a neoplastic. I, I think it's a repetition. X ray of a surgical granuloma will show hole in the hole. Okay. Sometimes perinative live infection or Ewing sarcoma. Okay. This is typical for eosinophilic granuloma. If you see hole in a hole, <coughs> this x ray this is like eosinophilic granuloma. Then, pager disease. Actually, this is a process in, in, in which excessive resorption and formation process is uh, occurs. And pain is frequently associated with lesion around the hip and the knee. Coarse, purposeful, trabeculi, lytic, plastic lesion, and enlarged bones and thickened cortices. So, actually, I don't have x ray this. You can read it from the book also. The three, what we treat in this. How we treat the Bajan disease? Any idea? Sir, with bisphosphonates? Yes, with bisphosphonates. Lab findings are elevated alkaline phosphatase, elevated hydroxychloroquine, increased urinary telopeptide, and alpha C telopeptide. Mm -hmm. This was for you, Mohsin. Remember these things. <laughs> yeah. Fiber dysplasia can be monoostotic or polyostotic. Okay. And expensile. The lesion is commonly discovered around the hip. Ground glass appearance on x ray, uh, but it can look like anything like infection, mets, cartilaginous tumor, or is it granuloma? Uh, histology will show Chinese letters C and O's. This came in exam. And typically, no rimming osteoblast on the trabecule. This came in exam. Treatment is observation, may need curatage, and cortical bone grafting and internal fixation. Remember this that cortical bone graft is less likely to be reabsorbed at the surgical reconstruction site. You can sell this bone graft and this will reabsorb. Some books have written it's contraindicated to fiber dysplasia. Okay. General consensus that polyostotic fiber dysplasia respond to the use of biphosphonates. And remember these things polyostotic lesion, cafe OLED spots, and endocrinopathy in Albright syndrome. Other problems which can be diabetes, thyroid, parathyroid, Cushing syndrome, this can also happen. This is an x ray. What is this deformity called? Shepherd's Crook. Shepherd, Shepherd Crook. Yes. This is Shepherd Crook. Shepherd Crook. Shepherd. Osteofibrosis, uh, fibrous dysplasia. This is confused with adamantinoma. If you have an x-ray, which is just like adamantinoma, you can su su suggest that there are two possible. One of them is this. Some who have controversy that this is even not an entity. They say this is not an entity. And the treatment is controversial, usually observation. No, no, it's fine. So adamantinoma is exclusive for tibia. Yes, adamantinoma is for tibia. That's it. How many orbits? I have never seen anything adamantinoma. It's tibia. That's it done. And the treatment is a resection. Right. Non assigned fibroma is benign, eccentric lesion near the metaphysis of the long bones, usually well marginated. The lesion is 30% of skeletal immature individuals and frequently discovered after minor trauma. And histology show fibrous tissue, giant cell tumor histocytes, and maybe multiple. And Associated with Jaffe Campanaki syndrome, including visual problems, mental retardation, cafe or red spots. And this is your non fine fibroma. That's it. We will end it over here. Okay. Okay, sir.